We're glad to know you're still there. Barring any last-minute change in plans, the Presidential Campaign Council of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, will this weekend release the final list of members of the council. It was learned that the council was still receiving inputs from stakeholders, especially governors of the party. Presidential candidate of the party, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who arrived in the country from London on Thursday evening, had shortly before he travelled, some days ago, released a 422-member campaign council. The list was met with grumblings and stiff resistance from most state chapters of the party, with APC in River State alleging that all its nominees to the council were dropped. However, after a tripartite meeting of the governors, the Abdullahi Adamulet National Working Committee and the PCC on Wednesday, there were indications that all parties to the dispute might have now harmonized their positions. Indeed, a member of the PCC said that the comprehensive council list would be ready by this weekend in preparation for next week's planned flag off of the campaign in Abuja. Joining us to discuss this is Tunji Abdul Hamid, a legal practitioner, and Wenga Olorumpomi, an APC member and public relations consultant. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Okay, uh, well, let's begin with you, Wenga. Uh, uh, first of all, what's with APC candidates and London anyway? Are we in for a deja vu already? Because we remember uh, what happened when our president was coming in, in 2014, 2015. Why did your principal well, go to I, London? Yeah, well, I, I don't know exactly what you mean by that. Uh, uh, for us, in the APC, we have a candidate that is extremely valuable. We have a candidate that is well experienced. We have a candidate that has a lot of antecedents that we can serve. Yes, oh, okay, maybe, right maybe like you said, you do not understand why I asked that. Nigerians were worried that is it uh, going to be a kind of president or is he going to be a kind of president that uh, will every other day or every other week be visiting maybe London or overseas because of health issues or not? Because the concern was that he was there because of his health. Even before the campaigns so have I'm started, not, I'm, not here to, I'm not here to add fire to the rumors that the media has been propagating needlessly for the past two weeks. The man has said with his own lips that he went to take the rest for ending, just so that he can pass time to rest from many of his uh, engagements. So, uh, if you guys have decided that he went, for health reasons, well, I can't help you. What he did was to go and take time off. This is his right. And um, he regained his energy. And immediately he returned, he has got him back to work. So I don't understand this uh, rumor that you want to expand that he went for health reasons. Well, um, rumors can come, but it's your place to debunk the rumors and give us the real thing that is happening. So if you say he was just going to rest in London, well, he's back now. He's back now. And as I said, he has gone back to work today. He had several meetings. He visited the presidential council, uh, campaign council office and uh, met with several and even as I speak to you, even a series of meetings just so that all interests are for the publication of the final list of, uh, of uh, uh, members of the campaign council. So we understand that we need to align all interests and that's what we do like. Okay, uh, before I go, I go to uh, um, my other guest, um, we're also wondering wh what is it that always happens in the primaries, a date was set, it was moved forward. Now can, uh, campaigns were supposed to be flagged off and there's been a delay. The list that was released is now going to be re-released uh, during this um, 
at the weekend rather, and then you are flagging off on a later date. Why are these delays? Is it that um, the internal mechanisms for resolving issues is collapsing or something? Well, again, you are using you are not using the word collapse. There is nothing like that. What has happened is we are a big. We are the only truly national party, and all our interests that we are aligned. The issues that came up that that, uh, that pushed that made it so that we had to readdress and replace our campaign list has been taken care of, and all interests are being uh, you know considered. We have not broken any laws. All what we are doing is taking our time and. Not for, so you know, if the campaign has not officially taken off, but in our minds we have already started campaigning. Uh, more than 20 rallies held while the man wasn't even around. And Nigerians are very aware of who their next president is. So uh, that it has not officially taken off is not is of no concern. And when it does, the red it on it. Okay, ah uh, well. Let me come to you, Tunji. Uh, the political landscape is about landscape rather is about to get really hot. PDP is flagging off on Monday, and APC will soon flag off. The list will be out this uh, uh, weekend. Let's talk about how that makes you feel, especially now that the APC candidate is back, and according to party members, uh, he's back and better than when he left. How does it make you feel right now? Yeah, I, I didn't get you clearly, but uh, you are asking me how how does it make how does it make me feel to see APC not a not the campaign since the uh, 28th of uh, September. Not That's just right. APC campaigns are going to begin uh, in earnest, especially from uh, Monday next week. So you are a political analyst, you are a a legal practitioner, and you are a concerned Nigerian. So what, what is your take on all that? Do you see a campaign that will be satisfactory to the citizens of Nigeria and help Nigeria shape its future? Uh, let me first of all react to the, to the, to the APC inability to flag up its campaign as, as scheduled. I saw some concern, it's, it's worrisome. And it's an, it's an evidence that probably APC is not ready for this uh, campaign. Uh, it, uh, it shows clearly that, that, that there is no synergy between the APC and the... Because the complaint by the, by the chairman two days ago was that uh, the list released uh, does not have their own input in it. And some of the governors also complained about that. So it, it, it's worrisome in the sense that, look, it will delay campaign in this manner. What will now happen if, if eventually if the, 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 the APC win election? Will it not be the like, the, like what our party did in the last election? Well, we have a six months before a minister's uh, list was released in the name of uh, we're taking our time. You know, a, a national issue is like that. So I'm working in that regard. They are, they are not proactive in, in, in taking decisions and acting. Uh, and uh, regarding campaign, uh, I think uh, this one will not be a different from what we have been saying before now. It will be it will still be the same jamboree when the one thing starts uh, take off. She may not be there. I will not be surprised if I don't see that because I know what uh, most people have been doing is to just uh, attack uh, one another. And if you look at all the parties that have, that, that is contesting, it appears that Elijah Chukwubaka is web for it. Because the, the program has, has been followed as scheduled. All the programs have been scheduled as followed as scheduled. It's the only candidate that has released a program in, in terms of five, 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 five point agenda. So I, I see him more prepared than any other candidate in this uh, election. And, and so, and that's probably because of the unpreparedness of the APC. They are, they, are, they are having an issue regarding the flag of. And uh, the absence of the presidential candidate. It's also not helpful, and I will, I will not I will not agree with the excuse being given that for to to rest 
this campaign uh, flag off and the campaign program have been scheduled before he traveled. And he knows uh, exactly when the program will take place, when the particular program will take place. He was invited for MBA, paper, whatever he was not around. He was invited for another program he traveled. Why, why would the president candidate not be available for all the matters in the history? Are you saying he's not well prepared? Uh, he's not, he didn't program himself very well? Because you are aware, all these programs we are talking about are not just yesterday that was released, two days ago, ten days ago that was released. They've been released before his own schedule. So uh, as, a national, as a president to be, you don't work based on your own time, you work based on people's time and people based on national interest and based on people's interest and national interest. So as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's worrisome for me. For, for what, what I'm seeing in APC. It appears they're not ready for this uh, campaign and for this election. Okay, uh, Benga, you heard what Tunji said, but um, uh, some members before now, as we have said earlier, were aggrieved over a lot of things. Muslim, Muslim ticket, we know that some uh, Christians who are APC in the North did not like it. Uh, to the presidential campaign list and sundry other reasons, uh, they were very aggrieved. How has that been resolved? Yes, the principal has come back. Uh, Ashiwaju Bola Metinubu has come back. But how have you resolved that? Or how do you intend to resolve that? Because as the ruling party, if something goes wrong in your party, uh, Nigerians can worry. So uh, I publicly uh, declared exactly that I'm an AP member. But I think my friend on the other side, He's a member of PDP, but hasn't come out to say exactly where he belongs to, which is, which is uh, a little dishonest. And I'd like to ask him, um, which governor called him and complained to him that uh, their interests are not being accommodated? Uh, that, that would be, that's just him, you know, trying to bring a attitude that doesn't exist. To say, oh, the, the that events were set and the candidate wasn't available. He should tell me where exactly it was published that uh, APC was going to flag up on the day I next said everybody uh, could kick off. At no time did APC say they were going to the date that they were going to kick off. Now, first now we, we, we have said we want an issue based campaign. And you are now the one bringing the issue of Muslim Muslim ticket. Those are not, that's not the issue. That is not an issue. We have picked a candidate. We have picked a running date. Let's allow Nigerians to, to vote based on competence, based on antecedents. If we pick the best choice from the Southwest and the best choice from the nothing. I stand to say here that there are, there's no better ticket than the Tinubu Jetima ticket. It exudes competence, it exudes ability, capacity, and these two men have always demonstrated that they are of the Christian uh, at all times. At all times. For, uh, for the survival of Christians in Bruno, he built schools in Christian communities, he rebuilt churches when Boko Haram burned them down. So why are we talking about, the, uh, about his religion? How does it matter? When I'm calling on this show, that's for the Christian or Muslim. So why are we talking about religion? Let's talk about personal ability. On those two things, have the best uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm glad you have that kind of confidence there. But um, if we're talking about issues in the Nigeria of today, I'm not talking about 1993, uh, where uh, Biola and uh, his running mate were Muslim, Muslims, both of them. We're talking about now. A lot of people have seen this Muslim Muslim ticket as uh, exuding, because that's the word you were using, as exuding uh, arrogance and uh, also exuding insensitivity. Will you dismiss that and say Nigerians shouldn't even be talking about that, but they should be talking about antecedents of what your principles has done? I think you are the only one talking about it, sir. You are the one who is making it an what matters to Nigerians is how do we take advantage of the railroad 
that President Buhari has put and actually put Nigeria's GDP from an average GDP of every year to seven percent every year. How do we put our, our youth who have all the intelligence and all the uh, creativity to make wealth, to create wealth? How do we put that to work? How do we get our women to work? How do we make Nigeria the biggest, the biggest economy in Africa? That is what matters. It's not about their religion. Yes. What I was coming on this too. Nobody so, has to so in, in essence, you're telling Nigerians no, no, what should matter to them and not what they think matters to them. What matters to Nigeria is how they will prosper. And Tinubu has done it for Lagos. What he did for Lagos is while being a Muslim that is married to a, a king. His wife is the king of the church. He attended the church the day she was, she was, uh, she was giving that position. So, well, how more friendly can you be? You are not making it an issue. Like, don't go to about that. Okay, well, uh, Tunji, let me, let me come to you. Um, he has just uh, spoken about what Nigerians should be concerned with, uh, but you seem to be concerned about some other things. Um, he has also dismissed the issue of Muslim, Muslim, and some other things that Nigerians might be talking about. What do you think about that? Well, in as much as the issue regarding the race, and uh, particularly... Oh, first um, of all, ju just a moment. Tunji, let me, uh, sorry for cutting you. Uh, let's establish one thing. He said uh, you didn't talk about you being PDP. You are PDP, right? I am a member of PDP. Very good. So let's establish that fact that you are and, not and, and, denying and, and, that and, and, fact. And, and, so answer it's the not question. Eating. It is not a report introduced as a PDP member. Uh, it wasn't eating. So... so uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here to speak as a PDP spokesperson or whatever. I'm speaking as a Nigerian. My, my interest as a Nigerian. That's what I'm speaking, and I'm speaking fast. If I say anything that is not that, 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 that affected by another part, you can come up with it. I will not say because I'm a member of PDP, now there will be a particular uh, party or candidate. As far as I'm concerned, you see, regarding the Muslim Muslim ticket, an issue for me. It, it is for the Nigerians to, to decide. Whether or not they want a, 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 a party that has no test, that is not specific to what is happening in the country now, you know the way we are in the country now, we need a balancing regarding a ethnic, ethnic uh, even ethnic and uh, and religious sentiment. You can't uh, talk about 1993 when we are in 2022. What the position we have in 1993 is not the position we are now. So I uh, will leave everything to Nigerians to determine whether or not they want a, a, a particular state. To dominate the system, so I, I will not, I will not talk more on that in that in that regard. Because I, if I have to be, I will they can, they can punish them with the foot, and then that I will see where we, we go. Okay, they are trying Nigeria to say, look, we don't care about your interest, we don't care about your sensitivity. sensitivity. Let me, let me return to Benga to so that we can try to wrap this thing up. Um, Benga, let me come back to you. Uh, I've asked this question before. Uh, I asked someone else this question, and I'm asking you now. You are APC. You are the ruling party, and whether you go to the National Assembly or you go to the Governor's Forum, or you are in the majority. But it seems like a third force is rising for the first time. Uh, because it wasn't really a third force when the APC came up. They were the opposition that gave the PDP the run for their money. But now, there seems to be a third force that everybody is jittery about. In the, uh, in the media space, everybody's talking about this third force, even if I do not mention names. Are you threatened by this third force, or you think it's a walk in the park? So, um... I was part of the 2011 campaign of uh, Nuhu Ibadu. I was part of the campaign of uh, Buhari in 2016 and 2019. And I think I have enough experience to know when I'm, when I'm facing a formidable opponent or I'm facing a, a, a bit of a joke. And 
I won't stay here and disparage anybody. All I can just say is this. If this third post can have more than 40 senatorial candidates out of the 109 senatorial plus that is available for Nigerians to vote for, if this third post can have more than 120, I don't know, then about out of West members, out of 360, if this thought force has not come up with any alternative of uh, argument other than other than to other than to complain about the many things that Nigerians, regular Nigerians are complaining, they are crying. Nigerians are asking for things, and they are uh, even them providing solutions. They are crying louder. If that is the thought force, then I don't think the APC has anything to fear. Oh, do wh what? The House of Assembly members, the National Assembly, State Assembly, and all that are not going to be the only ones voting. Do you think the people don't have the kind of power that they can, you know, remove whoever they want to remove from power if they want to? Do you think it doesn't matter so, so long as they don't have uh, National Assembly members and the people you mentioned? So for good or for bad, right? Elections are you have to have the logistics and the know-how and the manpower to master your army to deliver you on election day. Um, this what you are talking about. They are very loud on social media and non-existent on the street. They are extremely vocal. When, the, when it comes to you know, on the internet, but ask people everywhere. Do you know this, do you know these guys? And they are like, oh, okay. Okay. Well, um, so maybe we that's should why hold. I'm not scared of this. Benga, maybe we should hold that thought because we are really running out of time. Um, after talking about your party, would like you to also just address both of you. Uh, let me remain with you, Benga, before I go back to Tunji for a final word. Talk to the electorate right now because they are the ones that we need to educate so that they make the right choices. So briefly now for 30 seconds, if you may. All right, Nigerians, we are on the match again. Uh, President Mohamed and the APC have done the best that they can within the last eight years to stabilize the country. We had a rough time, covid uh, the war in Ukraine and have transmitted um, many of the things to do. But in Bola, Ahmed, Tinubu, and Katima are two men who have delivered a very, very important situation in their state. What I'm saying is that trust them with your vote, come out and mass and vote for them, and what to make Lagos possible is what he will do to make Nigeria possible. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Tunji, uh, over to you. Please, a word to the electorate, Nigerians who are listening to us now. The, the electorate to, to look for the more competent co uh, candidate, and the candidate can provide the uh, authority. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, the APC-led government has failed the country, and I, I, and I think Nigeria will not put a, a, party, a, a candidate who wants to continue from where the president has uh, stopped. It will be decisive for us. No, 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 Nigerians who, who, is, who loves this country will pray for what will happen and to happen again or for anybody to continue from where we are now. As far as I'm concerned, you know, Nigerians know the, the, what is happening and they know the best and they know they will put, they will know for, will put for the right candidate. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, well, at the end of the day, uh, the power belongs to the people and the choices we make will determine what our future will be like. We've been talking to uh, Tunji Abdul Hamid, a legal practitioner, and Benga Olorumpomi, an APC member and public relations consultant. Thank you, gentlemen, for being a part of the show. Thank you for having me. Thanks for having me. And with that, we wrap it up on Pol Plus Politics tonight. Uh, we'll leave you with the highlights of the week. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji. Have a good evening. Let me say this.
is expected when you have a beautiful bride for everybody to be interested in partaking in achieving the goal and desire of that project. And that's why we are having people saying what they are saying. But I confirm to you, it's not true. Uh, the federal candidate of APC is a tested, trusted, and experienced politician who has paid his dues. And in the area of constituting a composing campaign committee or campaign council, it's not a lily liver. So I'm saying this for us to have this understanding that it's just the figment of the imagination of those who are trying to run down the present candidate of APC. To understand what is playing out, the propaganda that went out that uh, the party is corrupt and all that. Don't forget, individuals, and we are, they, are, they will be taken out of the party because most of them are returned back to APC where they turn them to say, yes, we are not saying that there is no corruption in, in any system, political system. There is. But when you look at it, what is the state of Nigerians at that period compared to now? If you are talking about corruption, what, what, what were you buying rice? Tell me, Marianne, what were you buying rice back then? How much were you, were you transported to your village? How much were you entering flight? Same government people call corrupt. How much were you were, were school fees? How much was dollars at that time? So when we look at this issue and place it beside what is happening now, please, we're not, we're not, we're, we, article is ready by spirit to ensure that such system does not, do, such system does not, uh, you know, uh, kind of grow again from what APC have put us in. If, if they could push him for EFCC to come up, if they could push him for ICPC to come up, what, what do you think you will bring on board? Countries where people do not go to school, where children especially do not go to school, you create a huge gap, uh, therefore meaning that we cannot have them filling employment slots, if any are available. Uh, if children are not in school, there are open books for bandits, for kidnappers, for terrorists to recruit. That's what we see happening. If you look at the history of the Northeast and the Northwest, you find that uh, as the late chart dry, uh, began to dry up because of climate change, more and more young people had nothing to do. There was no fishing to, to be done. So there were easy recruits for terrorists. So if we're not dealing with education, if it's not important to us, then we're not really serious about building this country. ASU, for instance, has been on strike since February. Uh, most federal government, all federal government universities have been on strike. They've been closed since February. Uh, I do not see a deliberate attempt to end this issue. The president spoke at the UN just some weeks ago, promising that Nigeria was going to do better in terms of uh, our budgetary allocation to education. But our budgetary allocation for this year is even the, the lowest ever, about 5.6%. That's pretty low. Now, uh, we're talking primary education, uh, tertiary education, acceptably, um, you know, education is on the concurrent list, which means that states also have a huge role to play in this. Now, moving from education, I believe we also need to focus very importantly on the impact, on the, on the slots that we give to women. I know we've had, uh, you know, conversations about 35% uh, for women. Women need to be more visible. I would like to see women more visible in the in the incoming uh, government in 2023. We have brilliant women in the economy, in politics, and finance, and would like to see them featuring importantly in, in, in segments of the society. Um, in, our, in our law-making bodies, uh, the Senate, the House of Reps, I'd like to see more women take up seats there, you know, so that we can have better laws that favor women. You can see the trend of our National Assembly that bills that favor women are easily trashed. And understandably so, when you have men who are patriarchal, they would trample on anything that makes uh, women's voices louder. So we need women in the room to speak uh, loudly for women in Nigeria and make the points count.